Hey, my name's Clay Osley, owner of Fuquay Gun. Recently, we've seen an uptick in questions from customers about suppressors and how much they truly do suppress the weapon. How much quieter is the weapon with a suppressor? So we're taking this opportunity to make some videos and show you the difference between suppressed rounds and not suppressed rounds, and we're even demonstrating some of the subsonic ammunition through suppressors versus non-subsonic ammunition through suppressors, so you can hear both of those and the differences as well. We're going to be shooting some 9mm uh, suppressed weapons today, some 45 suppressed weapons today, 223, and the most popular, the 22. One of the biggest questions we get about suppressors is why does a person need a suppressor? There's a lot of reasons a person would want a suppressor. The biggest one being is cool factor and hey, it cuts down on the si on the noise in your neighborhood. A lot of folks have got the legal right to shoot where they are, but they just don't want to disturb the neighbors. Very, 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 very valid point. So you can actually purchase a suppressor, screw it on your weapon, and shoot, and a lot of times they won't even hear it inside their home if it's suppressed. So check out these videos, and I hope you like them. If you get time, take a look at our website, FuquayGun.com. Like our Facebook page. We do daily posts you may find informative as well. Hey, I appreciate you looking. We look forward to seeing you in the store. Thank you very much. That was 10 rounds unsuppressed. Now we're going to take uh, one of the new Rugers that actually comes already threaded from the factory and ready for a suppressor. We're going to score a suppressor on there. Hand tight is all it needs. Then we're going to take, uh, these are going to be subsonic 22 rounds. We're going to put it in that suppressed Ruger and we're going to fire those off. Why does the church mass? Um, and just to add just a little bit more to that, I'm going to take this same gun the first five rounds in this magazine are going to be subsonic 22 rounds. The next five are going to be your standard CCI Minimax. So you can hear out of the suppressor the difference that subsonic rounds actually make coming out of the suppressor. They make it significantly quieter. So again, the first five rounds are going to be subsonic. The second five are going to be standard CCI Minimax. You can hear a distinct difference there between those rounds. The subsonic moves at a much slower rate, allowing the sound to be suppressed a whole lot better. Now we're going to switch up and shoot 45. We're going to start off with a Glock 30 unsuppressed. Again, a Glock 30 unsuppressed. Just shot the Glock 30 unsuppressed. Now we're going to switch up and shoot a Glock 21 that I've already got set up uh, with a threaded barrel uh, and suppressor sights. On all of these guns, the suppressors typically stand up so high it blocks your sights. So a lot of times you have to change your sights and put actual suppressor height sights on it so you'll clear uh, your suppressor with your sights. Otherwise, your suppressor, suppressor is actually blocking the view of your sights. I'm going to simply screw this suppressor on. It's a Glock. Uh, 21. Load it up and rip. Very good. Very quiet. 45 suppressed is one of the best suppressed rounds because it's already a fairly slow round. Most of them moving uh, at about the 980 uh, feet per second mark. Now we're going to be shooting a 9mm. I've got two Glock 19s. The one with the Nivix finish is threaded and ready for our suppressor. And then I've got just a standard black one with not threaded, not ready for a suppressor. We're going to fire them both. We're going to fire uh, 9mm ammunition out of the unsuppressed Glock 19 to start with, and then we'll switch up and shoot the suppressed model. Very good. Now we're going to 
going to switch up and shoot the suppressed mode. Now I'm going to be shooting a Glock 19 suppressed. All we're going to do is very quickly just uh, screw this suppressor onto our Glock 19. Quick and easy. We're going to take our rounds, put them in, and we're ready to roll. And you'll notice a major difference. Major sound difference between the suppressed and the non-suppressed, 22 and 9 millimeter. We're going to move on now uh, to the 223, and this is actually one of my favorite pieces. Uh, what we have here is a Yankee Hill short barrel rifle. We've got an 11-inch barrel uh, on the actual 223 uh, barrel is 11 inches fluted. Um, and then we've also got a 9mm upper that we can switch over to it. And if I'm not mistaken, that was a 6-inch barrel on that 9mm upper. Um, and we've got suppressors for all of that. So we can take our one short barrel Yankee Hill uh, rifle that we've got attached stamp for it and convert it over to 9mm in just a couple of seconds and be shooting 9 and suppress it as well. A very common question we get when it comes to short barrel rifles and suppressors is, Clay, do I have to have two tack stamps for two items, even if I'm putting my suppressor on my short barrel rifle? The answer is yes. Every item you have is going to have to have a different tack stamp to go along with it. So in other words, in that particular case right now, I only have one tack stamp to cover my short barrel rifle receiver. Uh, the other upper doesn't require a tack stamp, only the receiver. Just like it, when you're building an AR, only the receiver's tracked. Same thing with these short barrel rifles. However, when we reach in here and we grab our 223 suppressor and we screw it on that rifle, we've still got to have another tack stamp for this suppressor as well. So uh, when we take the suppressor and lay it in this case, we now have to have a tack stamp for the AR-15 short barrel rifle, uh, and then we have to, got to have another tack stamp for the suppressor as well. We do not have to have a suppressor for each additional upper because that's not the part that's actually controlled by our government. Now I'm going to be shooting a Yankee Hill uh, short barrel rifle. Uh, this is actually uh, AR-15 with an 11-inch barrel. We've also added to it the Yankee Hill Quick Connect for our suppressor. Suppressors typically have fairly fine threads on them. This has got much thicker, heavier threads so we can screw our suppressor on more quickly. And it's got ratcheting pieces too. You'll hear that on the next uh, clip when we shoot it suppressed. Right now we're going to start off shooting it non-suppressed. Suppressed uh, Yankee Hill uh, 11 inch barrel. Now we're going to switch over and shoot suppressed. Now we're going to run the Yankee Hill uh, with the 11 inch barrel uh, with the Yankee Hill suppressor screwed on. You'll notice when I screw this on, this is very simple with heavy threads and easy to screw on. Screws on with ease, and when you get to the end, you'll hear ratchets in place. You don't have to worry about this one backing off. With all the other suppressors, uh, handgun suppressors, when we're putting those on, we want to put them on tight enough to where we know it doesn't back up, loosen up any. Uh, you don't want to get into a situation where your bullet comes out and actually hits some of those baffles. So now we're going to shoot the Yankee Hill suppressed, uh, 10 rounds of it as well. Very quiet. Um, I, I don't know exactly the decibel rating it drops it, but it's drastic. Um, you don't even have to actually wear hearing protection uh, to shoot this. Uh, it doesn't hurt your ears near as bad as, as unsuppressed. And that's it for the Yankee Hill.